Hi again, everybody. It's Dr. P here. And in this lecture, uh, the last one for chapter 24, we'll take a closer look at some heterocyclic amines. So from lecture one, you may remember we've got um, cyclic molecules that contain nitrogen in the ring. So things like pyrrole, um, things like uh, imidazole, um, which I'm actually not going to, uh, to draw. Um, let's see, another one that I do want to draw, however, is pyridine. Um, I do like to put in the lone pairs here. Let's see. Um, we could get, hold on, let me, let me see which other ones I'm actually going to mention here. Um, <laughs> uh, I actually want to mention um, quinolin. on the rest of my double bonds there. And then the related molecule I mean I guess they're all kind of related because you know they're all um, heterocyclic uh, isoquinolin. The reason why I put a capital Q there is I have problems making lowercase q's. I, I don't know why. Um, and let's, let's do indole as well. There's a reason why I am doing these particular um, put in my lone pairs. There's a reason why I'm doing these particular ones and it's because the reaction that I want to talk about in this lecture is electrophilic aromatic substitution. Okay, so these are some, I, I didn't mention the quinolin and isoquinolin, but I did have indole, pyrrole, and pyridine. Um, we talked in lecture two C-L-I-C, sorry, cyclic amines. I guess I could just say cyclic amines. I don't have to say heterocyclic. They're heterocycles or they're cyclic amines. We mentioned how parole, because if you protonate it, it dis disrupts the aromaticity. Parole is a very weak base that would, um, its protonated form is a much stronger acid. Uh, pyridine, not so much, but it's because we've got an sp2 um, uh, orbital for those uh, for that lone pair. Quinoline would be similar, and isoquinoline. Indole would be more like parole in terms of protonating. Now today, let's look at Let's look at some electrophilic aromatic substitution of heterocycles. All right, so we see some interesting, um, some interesting things here. So for example, we could have parole and we can treat this with bromine um, and actually it's done at, at low temperature here, and we will get two bromoparole. Okay, we don't get three bromoparole. Not three. Damn it, Wayne. 
sorry. Uh, Got to work on my spelling of parole. And we'll look at that in just a minute as far as the mechanism is concerned. We could do something similar with um, looking at uh, um, pyridine. I guess I should put in my lone pairs here. It's always helpful. So this guy is actually less reactive, so we're going to have to heat it up. And we end up getting in this case 3 bromopyridine. Okay, well, that's kind of interesting. What about these other, um, these other ones, indole and the quinolins? So we can get similar types of reactions. So quinoline, for example, If we do Br2, and we have to use um, some acid here as a catalyst, we will actually get We'll get five bromo uh, quinolin and eight bromo quinolin. And it's going to be about a 50 50 mixture. Now, if we try to do something similar, with isoquinoline, we actually see, and the text doesn't have a bromination, but it does have a nitration. And we see we actually get here Two, we'll get our five nitroso isoquinoline plus we will get our eight nitroso isoquinoline. But in this case, it's a 90 to 10 ratio. So we get 90% of the 5 nitrosoquinoline. Now, one question is, why does that happen? Well, let's do the last one, which was indole. I mean, I, I gave you that, showed you that um, structure before, because I want to show you what happens with indole. Because indole has part that looks like just regular old benzene, and the other part looks like pyrrole. And you know, I should probably put in my lone pairs here. And here, if we use Br2, zero degrees Celsius, we will get. Three bromo indole. So it's a little different because we're getting three bromo indole, and before we got what was it? We got two bromo parole. Now the question is, why do we see these product, um, these particular products? Why these 
products. Well, just like with our regular electrophilic aromatic substitution, we need to take a look at the mechanism by which the reactions proceed, because that's going to tell us something about how, um, or why, rather, uh, we get certain products. So remember, we looked back in chapter 16, we looked at the mechanism electro of electrophilic aromatic substitution for different activating versus deactivating groups, giving ortho and para or meta um, products and the reasons for those. Well, it's the same sort of thing here. So I'll go over the one that uh, the text goes over and I'll let you guys try some of these others um, on your own. Uh, so, so let's look at the question of why why does the bromination of pyrrole only produce two bromo pyrrole? Oh, damn it, Wayne. Okay. So why does the bromination of parole only produce two bromo parole? So let's take a look at what's going on here. So of course we want to look at the mechanism. So let's take our parole here. Lone pair. And I'm going to put in hydrogens here. Remember, it's always helpful to draw your hydrogens. That way you can keep track of where your positive charges are. Okay, so we can go ahead and we've got our bromine here. And we can go ahead and we'll attack that bromine. And we can get one of two things. We can get either... addition at the two position or we could get addition at the three position. All right, now both these cases we're going to have some kind of, um, <clears throat> we're going to have some kind of um, resonance structures here. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at what our resonance structures are like. So here, what can we do? Well, I could push these electrons over and that gives me N Double bond there, H, B, R, H, 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 positive charge right there, lone pair there. Now I can push those electrons over and make a third resonance structure. I probably should put in my lone pairs on my bromine. And now my positive charge is on the nitrogen there. Okay. And now if I had some, um, uh, you know, some base that came along, uh, it could be maybe not another molecule of P of, um, of, um, of parole, because it's not very basic. Um, it's more basic than bromine, maybe whatever our solvent is. But, you know, I'll just say we've got some base that would of course pull that 
pull that guy off and then this can go back there and that gives us our final product here there's our two Bromo parole now let's contrast this with a substitution at the three position now here I can go ahead and push some electrons around and I will get that guy there. And now that's all the electron pushing I can do. I can't delocalize the positive charge any further. So here, if I've got my base and I deprotonate, I can get those electrons going there and I will get my final product here. I realize the very bottom of which you can't quite see, but anyway, we'll just put this all in frame here and take a look at what's going on. So in the case of the two bromo parole, we've got greater delocalization of positive charge. So that's why it's favored. Remember, the more stable our intermediate is, the more likely it is to form, and the, or the easier it is to form, and the more product we will get that came from that intermediate. So we have a more stable intermediate because we have greater delocalization of the positive charge. It's delocalized on that carbon, that carbon, and the nitrogen. With the three bromo parole, with that mechanism, it's only delocalized on one carbon and the nitrogen. And in fact, it's the carbon, um, carbon right next to the nitrogen, so it's not delocalized at all on the carbon further from the nitrogen. So it's really more, more concentrated. So we have positive charge spread out over a greater area in the intermediate that gives rise to the 2-bromo parole. So this would be our major product. Okay, so think back to, re to when we did that kind of analysis with our ortho, para versus meta um, uh, directing substituents and activating, activating versus deactivating. And um, be prepared to do it for some of these other reactions. So, you know, a good question on the e exam, um, or, you know, a good question on the final might be, Draw the intermediates that show how you get 3-bromopyridine. And why don't you get 2-bromopyridine or 4-bromopyridine? So that might not be a bad bad question to ask. Um, and uh, Or maybe it'll just be on the quiz. I don't know. And you could even extend it and uh, look at these polycyclic systems, which involve drawing a bunch more resonance structures, but... Um, still the same uh, still the same same general general idea so anyway um, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys uh, about as far as uh, heterocycles were concerned and um, you know the the effects of doing electrophilic aromatic substitution on these amine heterocycles and uh, I mean it's kind of cool they do some of the same reactions but because of the presence of the nitrogen it affects um, you know, the substitution patterns and stuff like that. All right. Well, that wraps it up for this lecture. And um, I will see you guys later then. And until then, stay safe out there. Bye now.